Ricky Maru up on the high ground. Then we are on his way off. Dark Sears on the run and he jumps. afternoon and you see some fun stuff because I'm just turning my size from the minimap thingy up. Bam. There we go. Welcome! Welcome to a game between CLG and Orange and it's not just a game. It is the first game of the best out of three to determine which one of these two teams will be going into the winner's bracket and which one will be dropped down to the loser's bracket for this Pro Dota 2 playoffs. Uh, for the total grand final for Sunday, for a well, main prize of $10,000. That's a lot of money. So that is what these two teams are fighting for. So come together with six other teams, because there's eight teams in these playoffs. And uh, we won't only see CLG versus Orange today, we'll also see Infused versus Zenith. And this is, uh, well, this is the first out of two games. Yesterday we had two games, uh, two matches I should say, uh, also best out of threes. And today two matches, both best out of three as well. So game number one, and we're going to see who is going to be taking this game, having the advantage for going into the game number two. We have already have some banners going on. We have got the Darkseer, we've got the Lashrak, we've got the Naga Siren, and the Furion. Band out. Uh, we still leave the Lycan in, still leave the Chen in. I, uh, I have to say, I will. Well, I let me check the ping straight away. Because it's US West. Both teams should be put in a disadvantage, but uh, the discussion was which one, which one will be worst. Because we, we worst, sorry. Because it will be bad for both. Let's see here. We have CLG being around 260, 267. Well, they're actually very even. All 267, with Orange actually being around 300. So orange having the worst of this uh, of this ping, of these pings I should say. Uh, Rubik gets banned out by CLG, a hero that they definitely don't want to face. Maybe they plan on going for an Enigma. Who knows? Lycan gets banned out by orange, so that's uh, that's um, expected ban. It will leave the Invoker still for pickups for CLG, and uh, let's see what orange wants to go for. Do they want to go for a Chaos Knight, or are they gonna go for a jungle hero? Because Chen and Enchanters both still in. But of course the counters for that are still in as well, so they might just want to wait for that. Maybe wait until like the th their third pick. If they pick up a jungle hero then they can ban out the other jungle hero still there and get that advantage in the jungle that your opponent then won't have. It will also depend of course what CLG will pick up after in their uh, next two pickups. But first, Orange job to pick up some heroes that they think we want those because otherwise we won't have an advantage and we want those because otherwise it might be picked up or banned out by CLG. They go for a Queen of Pain. A solid hero, basically, well, you can't really say a lot about it other than it's a so it's a solo mid or it's a side lane. It can go every side lane. It it only says okay, we're gonna be fairly aggressive around the ten minute mark, kind of. That's the best, basically the only thing you can say for that. Sand King will be picked up here as well, as uh, well we don't know what it will be combined with yet, as I think it will be combined with something unless they just pick it up in case CLG wants to go for that Broodmother because that one is still in the pool and that one is is one that we normally see picked up or banned out uh, but with that, that Sand King already up on orange CLG might just think you know what we're not gonna go for Broodmother you already have the counter for that so you know screw that we're not gonna do that uh, they do pick up the Chen, so having that jungle hero for them, and another solo lane secured. So that is the Beastmaster there, as they now are looking for a strong dual lane. That's the thing that they want to go for next, as they, they are, there's still a lot of options for that. We'll see uh, if Orange is going to ban out something like CK, Brewmaster, Morphling. Those heroes, they make good dual, dual lanes. Uh, or maybe Orange wants to already pick up one of the do uh, one of the dual lanes, just in case. Or maybe they want to have the Brewmaster, uh, sorry, the Brood Mother for themselves. Could be as well. Or since there's a jungle hero up on CLG's side, they might want to secure a jungle hero for them as well. Otherwise, CLG might uh, ban out those other jungle heroes. Like an enchantress would be able to be more aggressive than the Chen earlier on, and it is a, it's just a fairly standard counter to the Chen. So. Uh, that is uh, 
But that is uh, the pickup there. Sorry, slightly distracted. Let's see what CLG is gonna ban out. I mean, right now, because the Broodmother is not really picked up, you don't really want to solo that Sand King then. Maybe they still want to pick up the Broodmother, it could be. Then CLG should probably ban it out if they're expecting it. Even though they have the Beastmaster, Beastmaster is a potential solo for Broodmother as well. With his access being able to kill off the spider rights and spider links. He could do that if they want to go for that. If if Orange wants to go for that Broodmother. Of course I'm not sure how well in favor Broodmother is in uh, in Asia. So I'm not sure. Zilji probably knows because they played Orange I believe in the Beyond the Summit World Tour. And I think Zilji actually uh, got the better of the, that one. I'm gonna see if Orange is able to take revenge. They ban out the Lone Druid, so a solo lane ban out for them. As that is of course something that Orange still needs if they have to dual lane with the Sand King. Which they which they could, potentially. So a solo lane ban out, not a Broodmother, but still something banned out. That is a solo lane for them. And an anno annoying hero to deal with as well. I mean, Broodmother is annoying because she'll be on the lane the whole time. And uh, pushing your towers if you, if you don't uh, counter it, counter her. But Bru uh, Lone Druid is an annoying hero because he'll just be farming wherever nobody is and you know if you're gonna try to harass him on lane he'll just leave the lane and go farm somewhere else. Until he's big enough to join in team fights. It's just an annoying hero to uh, to deal with. And for people watch, uh, asking in the chat, the third one for Orange is the stand-in right now. So they're not playing with their full roster. They're playing with the stand-in Kiki Me. Kiki Me. That is their stand-in for this match. We've got a Dragon Knight being banned out by Orange. A hero that they might fear. Because if we look at Orange's lineup so far, I mean, the Enchantress is aggressive fairly early. Queen of Pain, aggressive fairly early. Sand King with that epicenter at level 6, he'll probably be looking for some kills as well. So, so far, Orange looking to be uh, mid slash early game. And a Dragon Knight is a good counter for that because he is. He is also, well, at level 6 he will have his dragon form and it won't be easy to take him down. You want to be able to, with Orin's lineup, you want to be able to gank, get a kill and maybe a tower at that. They need some more pushing power, but they have already the Enchantress. They could get some uh, some more, potentially. But a, a Dragonite is then a counter to that. So they don't want to face that one. Brewmaster being banned out by CLG. A hero that they don't want to play themselves. So uh, if we're looking for dual lanes, we still have the Shadow Demon in there. Uh, we still have the CK in there. CK, Asia Separation is a, is a solid lane, but, but the CK is also being partnered up with the Crystal Main, with the Lina. Uh, Crystal Main, of course, also with a Morphling, another dual lane still in the pool. Five seconds. As, uh, well, CLG will probably be looking to, to one of those uh, dual lanes. Well, there's the Shadow Demon, so that one's banned out. Shadow Demon makes for a lot of good combinations, purely because it's a Shadow Demon, and yeah, you know why. I think I told that like zillions of times before, so. Anyway, they pick up the Morphling, so we're probably going to see a Crystal Main from them as well, unless Orange decides, you know what, we think you're going to pick up a Crystal Main, so we are going to pick it up instead of you. But I, I'm actually not sure that they should do that, especially now that the Morphling is picked up, and they already have the Queen of Pain as a soul, and if the Enchant was in the jungle, they need a hard carry, a ranged carry with that Sand King, potentially, if the Sand King is not going to go solo lane, and then a solo lane still. But which one it will be, I am not sure. I'm also not sure how they would run the lane. Maybe, maybe try to. Well, they're probably gonna get Queen of Pain versus the uh, versus the Invoker. Gonna try to do that one. Shouldn't be too hard. Just send her in the mid lane. It will still depend, of course, which hero they're gonna pick up as their solo lane. Uh, but that Sand King. Maybe they want to try to match him up with the with the Beastmaster. It it could be. It could work out. And then they could go for another for for dual lane still. If they have the Queen of Pain in the middle, Sand King versus the Beastmaster, and a dual lane for themselves. And then they could also go for a combination. So CK, for example, with an Age Separation, for example, is still in. And then they oh never mind. They pick up the Templar Assassin. So more mid game aggression. And th this basically says, okay. We see your pick. We know what you're gonna do. Oh, it's not gonna be Crystal Main. It's gonna be Venomance. Okay, but we know what you're gonna do. We're gonna, yeah, Venomance. Actually, it would have probably been a Crystal Main if that Templar Assassin wasn't picked up. But Venomance is a good counter to the Templar Assassin. We'll make that refraction pop off in no time. But 
Orange picks up the Templar Assassin and says, okay, we read your cards. We know that you want to go for late game. Hold off any kind of any kind of push until uh, Morphling is big enough. And we are going to go with so hard mid game strategy, so hard on you as soon as our heroes reach that level 7, level 6, level 8, reach those marks, Five. that your Morphling will not be able to do anything anymore. And our advantage that we're going to get is going to be too big to deal with for you. So go all in with that. So I don't expect to see a hard carry being picked up here. Rather, either uh, well, it really depends how they want to what they want to do with the Templar system. Do they want to have her safe, uh, a fairly safe lane for her with a uh, with a, uh, with a support still there, or do they or do they want to go for more more mid game aggression? Something like, for example, Bounty Hunter or Team Fight. Well, they have it. They have already got the Sand King, and Team Fight for uh, for CLG is not really there. So maybe they want to go for uh, they're gonna go for Wind Runner. So that's their solo lane. <coughs> wow. So that's gonna be. Uh, and there's solo lane for the last one. A solid one is at that. Just tr gonna try to make sure that Morphling is not farming too much, I guess. And uh, we are gonna jump ourselves into the game. Cause, uh, well, there we go. Bam, done. Okay, and the minimap heroes icons are bigger now, cause I did, as you saw, I did that at the uh, start of the game. And we're gonna see who's playing what. We see X or Extinct playing the Enchantress. Stand in for Orange. Kimiki, K Kikimi, sorry, on the Queen of Pain. On the bottom lane, we see Winter going towards that one with his Wind Runner. On the middle lane, we see uh, KYXY. I have to say, the first day that Templar Assassin was out, that, fr that Friday, for, m for me it was Friday, the first match ever, competitive, first ever competitive match with the Templar Assassin was played for Pro Dota 2, was played by Orange, and we saw KYXY playing the Templar Assassin, and he was owning with it. He was really owning with it, and maybe we're gonna see the same thing. Of course, he was still a fairly new hero then, and he wasn't really countered at the time. I think they were fighting Earth versus IG. Uh, there wasn't really a counter picked up, but this time uh, there's of course a Venomancer. But we'll see. Uh, we'll see how, how this is gonna go. Uh, furthermore, we have Ice playing the Sand King up on, uh, well, up on the Ganger lane. Staying with the Enchantress. Maybe gonna go for a quick first lot, perhaps. And, uh, yeah, Queen of Pain is gonna be on the top lane. So that's the lane up for, uh, for Orange. We're gonna have a solo bottom, solo top, jungle Enchantress, and maybe a bit of a roaming Sand King with, uh, Templar Assassin in the mid game. For CLG, we have Lacoste on the top lane. He is gonna see that there's gonna be a Sand King for his double damage rune. So he won't be able to pick that up. He is gonna be fine though. He should be fine for his the Queen of Pain. Will be forced back a bit, but with this Ancient uh, stack that will st stack here, unless it's gonna be warded. Unless it's gonna be warded. Okay. Okay, so he might have some trouble. <laughs> Okay, well, we see a Misery on his Invoker in the mid lane, gonna be first a Templar Assassin. Templar Assassin should get some free farm here, we'll see at least some good farm. Invoker will be able to get last hits as well, but he won't be able to stop the Templar Assassin from uh, from farming. That would be the job of the Venomancer so that would be there. We have Aki in the jungle, he's gonna be playing the Chen. And that cost, yeah, he really has to be careful here, so... I, w I was earlier gonna say, like, he will be fine with those Ancients, we'll be able to stack them, we'll be able to get experience that way. I mean, he'll catch up on whatever he loses right now, with being forced out of the lane. But, uh... Yeah, with that with that one there, oh, Gale, Windrunner, has to use a Windrunner, she'll be fine though, or not. Or not. Still heavily slowed, here comes the right clicks from the Venomancer as well. The Winter in a lot of trouble, won't have a Winter, will really he be in time towards the Tower? Sunstrike gonna help out and this Invoker that gets the first blood. Misery taking the kill with his Sunstrike and that is the advantage for CLG. Not just because there are three heroes sharing the experience, but also because it was Misery that took the last hit. He gets an advantage over the Templar Assassin, uh, if only by level so far, but uh, definitely an advantage at that. So we're gonna have Pycat on the Morphling, and uh, he will be uh, supported by the Venomancer, Ooh, played by Miracle. So that is the lineup from uh, from CLG right now as well. As we are seeing a potential gank. Hello, is there smoke? Yes, there is. If they want to use it, there is no ward up here for the Radiant team. We're gonna see which way they're gonna go. Beastmaster is not moving towards the site. So this basically gives away that they ha don't have a ward there. So Orange knows, like, okay, we can be safe here anywhere we want. Nobody's moving back. 
And it's it's still a question, who are they going to go for? Are they going to go for the Beastmaster? Are they going to go for Misery? Templar doesn't manage to get the rune. Illusion had a bottle now as well. And there they go. And there's Lacoste. There will be a Boros Strike. There will be a follow-up song from the center. Here comes Queen of Pain blinking in. Shadow Strike landing. Beastmaster a lot of trouble. Scream there as well. And that is going to be a kill. Going to the Enchantress with a successful gank from Orange. You did your best. And uh, they might be rotating. Nah, they, the Centaur will drop soon, so they won't really have the advantage anymore. Even though Ice sticks around, for now, for now. Radiance top tower is under attack. Oh well. We're gonna have another smoke gag though. This one is actually smoked up. The other one wasn't, of course. Uh, no uh, first sun from uh, from this team though. As uh, well, the burst strike, of course, set the sun up for the Centaur earlier. But this one, they had, they need to have the slow. They need to have the gale. There's the gale. There comes the right Oh, Courier in a lot of trouble as well, even though he's, he should be fast enough. Unless Misery can get him. No. Nice upgrade. But KYXY still in a lot of trouble. Test of Faith will end the job. And Aki taking the kill with that. And we saw that we, we saw a Miracle running towards that Courier. And they didn't know how fast they should upgrade it to be flying. Just to be able to, to be able to take more than one hit from Misery. But yeah, he didn't even get one hit off. So no Courier for Steel G. But still a kill on the mid lane up on the Templar Assassin. And that is the mid lane definitely in favor of Invoker. Now he's been part in two kills. Both kills for Steel G so far. And Templar Assassin being put on the back foot with that one. And uh, roaming around ganking team. They have two war two two uh two creeps. Not really uh, not really a centaur. They need a centaur or troll warlord for a very successful kill, even though yeah, Beastmaster needs those stuns, I guess. Because he's such a very tanky hero. When the men are gonna come in from the side, Winter will be fine though. It will take some harassment. Do some harassment back as well. If it's been a rune, oh misery. Gets a burrow strike up on him. Gets right click. There's a set of hell call as well. We'll be able to go invisible. No, plays an ice wall though. It's alive for now. He doesn't have any consumables. Enchantress managed to get his last hit in. And it's going to be another kill for the Enchantress, which is now 2 for 0. And Invoker, the advantage that he had, he now lost by going down to orange right now. Beastmaster getting, still getting harassed. He's doing quite a nice job of staying in uh, in range of the experience though he's only one level behind on the Queen of Pain and that's a, that's actually a really, no really nice job done Aki having smoked up again with the centaur or still with the same centaur most likely and they're gonna go up on the Windrunner uh, will there be a Gale? oh here they come I think the, she would be fine oh, Gale so they really wanna dive this they could centaur could tank up the tower for sure we farm through Sunstrike gonna help out and BAM Invoker taking the last hit with the Sunstrike Tower will do some damage on Mis Miracle, but you know, who cares? Not Miracle anyway. And uh, Pyke will take up the rest of the tower when they uh, leave uh, for back out. Ooh, Aki, having some trouble here with the tower. Dyer's bottom Ooh! Tower is under attack. Still has th three tangos though. But they're not a successful gang coming up from CLG, and I have to say, with both of these lineups, I mean, they have fairly even lineups uh, regarding that. I mean, both with the Enchantress and then and the Chen able to, to draw out some ganks and they're basically having the same tactic regarding that but from Orange we'll be seeing a lot more aggression as soon as they got their heroes level uh, level 6, level 7, something like that and from CLG we we will only see see this, they will only be, be farming that Morphling up as fast as they can and maybe with the Beastmaster Roar of course as soon as he level 6 he will want to get some kills with that as well Ooh, Wildkin but uh, but it's it's not the same potential as a Queen of Pain as a uh, as a Templar Assassin as a Sand King. Oh, blink in! They want to go for this. Here comes the Chantress on the side, but this time Beastmaster was fast enough. He had that uh, that hawk here, so he also sees the Templar Assassin going there. Who pops his illusion rune, and this is actually going to be a tower going down for sure. Four heroes of orange here. The only one not here is the Windrunner. Who is having some trouble again on the bottom lane, but uh, eats a tango, should be fine. And here comes the reinforcements. Miracle as well as Aki here. Uh, they will not be able to stop the tower from going down though. Kill off uh, Illusion. There goes the tower. Gil goes through, doesn't it? Well, only hits on the Sand King, which is probably one of the better ones to get it at because that way he won't be able to do his uh, Burrow Strike to put someone out of play to, to stun someone to get that initiation off. And uh, they defend the rest of their towers. Four heroes here of uh, of Orange. That is that is quite a commitment for one tower. And you'd wonder if if that's really worth it because it will give Misery some free farm in the mid lane. It will give uh, a bit less stress for for this Morphling as he knows that he won't be able to get ganked. So he'll be able to get more less hits actually. So there we go. Sorry, I forgot to put that one up. 
But yeah, as we can see, Morphling is just happily free farming. We do have the Queen of Pain and the Templar System free farming as well. Well, not free farming, but definitely doing good on the last hits. And actually, uh, yeah, fairly high with Queen of Pain and Morphling probably being the one actually free farming. Uh, Invoker is going to try to throw out some harassment here. KYXY okay, should be fine though. Guild didn't in, come in time. And the sentry were being placed here as well, just in case. Just in case the KYXY was going to stand here with his, uh, with his melt, waiting for someone to pop by and kill him off. And here we have gank team again. This gank team actually, they, they have had some, some successful ganks, so they are level 5 right now, which is actually quite nice uh, for a gank team. Uh, well, we see the Chen still at level 4, with the Venomous at level 4 as well, so it will be uh, it will be orange in favor of the experience right now, and with those ganks, I mean, normally you'll see, uh, you know, you, you'll see one dual lane, but right now it's actually three solo lanes for orange, so getting maximum experience out of that one, and also getting the better of their roaming heroes uh, in comparison to oh, to uh, to CLG. We'll see what well, Gila cost. We're in a lot of trouble here. Sonic Wave does hit. 46 experience left. Will he be able to do that? There will be. Uh, I think he's gonna drop those Shadow Strike. will take him down. No. Pops a cell, but here comes Queen of Pain again. One more right click in there, and that's the kill. And Chantress last hit. Actually getting the kills. So far, three kills for Orange. All three on the back of of uh, of Enchantress of Extinct. Ward being placed, aggressiveness from Orange here as well. A Sand King will rotate towards the bottom lane, and actually, I'll, I'll show the experience graph is actually back to zero right now. It was in favor of CLG purely by being able to take more kills, but uh, yeah. And that is also, of course, able because of Invoker taking two kills, sharing that experience between three heroes rather than with uh, two. Oh, misery, a lot of trouble here. Rumble right click needed, Cold Snap is there. Tower will help out with that. Gale is as well. You will be able to be saved, but KY X might not save. Roar, Axis, Invoker taking the last kill. Overextension from KYXY. Lacoste very fast on that uh, assist there with the Roar getting ready there, making sure that he was able to help out Invoker. And so far, this game is still so very even. I'm, I'm still waiting for the time when, uh, when we're gonna see, uh, when we're gonna see Orange roaming around even more, maybe trying to shut down that Morphling. Or maybe going as a four team again and get, trying to get some successful kills in. But I mean, of course, CLG knows what the the strategy for Orange kind of is, and they have got a Beast Mouse and they've got an Evoker and they've got a Venomite. So three heroes that are very good at counter pushing or turtling, if you want to call it that. There is just there is is a very good combination. Oh, Pycat will be able to be forward to the high ground though. Should be fine. And Aki would be able to help out though, even though he's uh, he's almost level six. I haven't got his hand of God just yet, but almost, fairly close. Oh, we're gonna actually see KYX by taking it up for Pycat uh, on this Morphling, and uh, I do think that uh, KYX should have the better of it. Venomizer should be rotating maybe towards the bottom to help out uh, so that Pycat can continue farming work. Because right now, if he stays here, that will hurt Pycat way too more. Wow, look at that damage being done. And here comes the Venomizer already. He's gonna try to land a Gale perhaps. There we go, Gale doesn't hit actually, that is a not very nice. Right clicks go off, here comes a Chen as well. Okay, we're actually in a lot of trouble, pops his refraction already off due to the Venomancer there with his uh, poison and Chen taking the last hit. And that again, overextension from KYX. And that is also. Pause. <laughs> that is also due to the lack of wards. I mean, look at the, look at the minimap right now. There are no wards up for the Dire team, so. So KYX actually thought he was safe, but then two heroes came in from the side and he was not able to do that. And maybe they have warded and they counter warded with that one. As I got the t request from the chat to turn off the turn the the size of the minimap heroes up even more, so I'm gonna turn it to oh to 800 and on pause goes. And Pika will be TPing back, but he'll be able to replicate into his uh, into his uh, replicate. Yeah. <laughs> Replicate into his replicate. Indeed, that's what I said. And uh, we'll be able to continue his farm without losing all too much. Sandy has rotated to the bottom lane as well. He's level six, so we might see him going for some uh, some kills with his happy center, perhaps. Yeah, not on the uh, not on the morphling though. He won't be able to do that one. Morphling will be morphing into strength way faster than he can uh, kill him off. <coughs> Evoker 1700 gold up on him. I do expect a four staff out from him, but he doesn't have. I mean. He's not going for this uh, quad wax build, so he's not uh, going for that maximum speed. So I am not entirely sure if he actually wants to go for that, but we'll we'll find out. 
We'll find out for sure. Windrunner getting some more last hits here in this middle. She has been shut down a bit by that morphling, or at least, whoa, middle lane. Wait a second, burst strike. There's the epicenter. Once to go for Miracle. Sun strike will hit. Well, Pound. Wow, that's a lot of damage. And still, Venomancer goes down. That epicenter is just way too much. Sonic Wave going through. Pike and Morphic Strike might be able to stay alive there. Sanking getting picked up by the Chen. Game by by no more Venomancer, so his refraction is up way high. But still, Chen taking a double kill, killing off the Templar. Says, and wants to go for the Queen of Pain. But Queen of Pain blinks herself away and should be fine. We had a uh, windrunner coming in from the side, but she was too slow to uh, to get here. And uh, nice nice skills again by uh, by CLG able to stop the game from happening. Okay, they lost the Venomancer, but it's a support Venomancer and picking up a temporary assassin for that again is definitely uh, is definitely in their favor. As I just once more have to point out that CLG is actually at a slight advantage due to the ping difference. So just so you're aware of that. Like a Queen of Pain building towards a uh, Lincoln Sphere. I mean, that is one of the, the things that you can do versus the Roar from the Beastmaster. I mean, BKB won't matter, but uh, Roar will. Oh, Ice in some trouble. There's the Roar. Sunstrike, Gale, and that's a kill. Oh, or is it? Burst like away. Stick charge is being used. Right clicks are there. He's going to try to pop himself in the Sandstorm. And there's Queen of Pain trying to help out. Venomizer taking the last hit still, though. Queen of Pain not able to do anything. And Lacoste is going to TP out of there. Power Shot will still go through, but he won't die anymore. Even though they might still want to go for that KYXY coming in from the side, trying to get that vision up on Misery, but no can do, no can do. And I have to point out again, I mean, the heroes up on Orange indicate aggression around this time. This is their prime time with for their heroes. This is their, their time to shine. Because, you know, they have a Morphling on the other side who just destroyed a tier 1 tower here, by the way. And the Morphling, the, I mean, CLG has the late game secured with that Morphling, while Orange has the mid game, co it, based on the heroes purely, based on heroes purely. And right now, they are, their ganks, their aggressiveness, is actually getting turned around on them. The support from CLG is so good, with everybody being everywhere, helping out TPs everywhere. I mean, to, to see the TPs grow venomous right now, but he, he did have them, so, you know, it is there. It is uh, it is getting too much for for uh, for Orange, and it they have to be really careful not to let it go out of control, but still maintaining some sort of pressure, because that is going to be their strength. Winter are still in the middle lane, trying to get some levels up. She's level seven right now. Let's take a look at the levels. Uh, we do have the three lowers at level seven: Enchantress, Venomancers, as well as the Sand King. Of which two level sevens together with the level ten now on their way to the mid lane. Oh, Venomancer, he is so dead right now. There's a burst strike. There's a clap. That's a kill. Yeah, I. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I just said, oh, wait a second, we're gonna go to the top lane. Kway X, gonna try to do kill a kill. Lacoste, oh, actually, oh, whoa, so close. 15 HP left on Lacoste. Misery taking the kill on Kway X before he could kill off Lacoste. And here comes the support, but it's going to be too late. Queen of Faith thinking about blinking in, but won't be in time. Lacoste is going to TP out of there. Just wow. And KYX, I, I, and again, again. Almost, but not quite. And if, he, if, he, if there's going to be more mistakes like this, they can't afford that. They just can't. It is too much. It is way too much. In the meantime, Morphin level 11 picked up a Ghost Scepter. He's gonna go for a quick Ethereal Blade. Well, quick. Yeah, that's gonna be his first item anyway. So, uh, Ethereal Blade. I mean, if we look at the Dire his side, there are heroes that he can pick up fairly fast with that old Sand King. Gonna get caught out. Gale hits on him as well. No, he dodges the Gale. Nice job. Burst strike to the low ground. Axis won't fly. No roar yet. It's on cooldown and he will be out. Wow. Nice play by, uh, nice play by Ice. Close to letting themselves get cut out. He actually placed the ward here fairly aggressive, so we we, we we do see them placing more wards so they can coordinate their ganks a bit better. At the moment, no wards up on the side of CLG either, but we'll probably see them up again soon as uh, Venomancer does have them in his inventory as he's again trying to get some more levels in his middle lane. Still, I should say. But yeah, if we look at the side of, uh, of the Dire, I mean, Enchantress, Windrunner, maybe even Queen of Pain. Maybe the same thing. They're, they're not that tanky heroes, so an Ethereal Blade is a great choice for that. 
Now we have three heroes from CLG in the mid lane. They want to maybe push out this tier one tower. There is a smoke up for Orange, and they want to go for this Beastmaster here, where KYXY is actually uh, farming here, some here, and they're going to come in from behind. We see the minimap drawing. They want to go in from the side. They know Beastmaster wants to pull these Ancients again, and they're going to stop him from doing so. Here they come. Burrow Strike hits. There's the right clicks. Epicenter being casted. Lacoste, a lot of trouble. Hand of God going through, but Enchantress still picking off the last hit. Four for zero right now. And that is something that, I mean, Enchantress has got four out of the nine kills. And that's, of course, great for her. She's getting nice farm. Ooh, middle lane. We have some trouble. Va Gale going off on Winter. There's it as well. Sonic Wave going through. Hits on two. Sunstrike. Gonna hit. Gonna kill off the Windrunner. Invoker taking that last hit. Misery is in trouble. Nice shackle. Burrow Strike hits on some creeps. It's gonna be Misery that's gonna get picked off here as well. Won't be sent home in time. And Queen of Pain taking the last hit. This is a comeback for Orange, or at least definitely a fight won by Orange. They took down, uh, they took down uh, the invoker for a prize of a wind runner. That is worth it. That is worth it. And I was, uh, I was, I was pointing out. I mean, those kills up on the dire side, they have gotten total seven kills, and Enchantress got four of them. Oh, Gale hits. Uh, just annoying for the reflection. That's it. They're not going to go in for that. I, s I think unless the cost wants to throw out a roar, unless he wants to do that one. No, he was thinking about it though. Not fast enough. But yeah, four out of seven kills for the Enchantress, and that is all nice. But you, you, you really want those kills up on the Templar Assassin or up on the Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain, we just took the kill on the Invoker, so that's a kill she has. But Templar Assassin being five for, th uh, for five, well, zero five three, I should say. I was gonna say five for three, but you know, I, I, I forgot to call the zero the zero five for three. It's uh, quite deadly. TP in, slow up on Miracle. Miracle will give himself a wave right now, will give his life. Also, be sent home, actually. We should be staying alive. We'll be staying alive. Deafening Blast goes through, but nobody is anymore. Queen of Pain still goes down to the Morphling, though. Sandkin gets picked off here by the Beastmaster. KYXY gonna try to do some damage. Nice Shackle again. Invoker a lot of trouble again. Goes down. And Chandra's picking up a kill. And Chandra's denying a tower, though. Ench well, actually, Enchantress got an assist only. Never mind. Pycat wants to do from wants to go for more. Doesn't have a wee from just yet. And it's gonna be Ors that's gonna be on the run. There won't be a roar anymore. It was already used just now. Kway actually taking some damage, but has refraction again. A miracle, no gill up on him uh, just yet, or at least not in range for it. CLG looking to go. Maybe they want to go more aggressive. Oh yeah. Well, if that gill would have hit them, perhaps. But no. The rest is already backed off anyway. Mechanism on the Chen, we saw that earlier being used. Great help on a team fight. I mean, otherwise, that, that Venomaster would have definitely gone down. And he was sent home, got healed back up, and TP'd back fast. And he was back in there for that fight well before it was over. So, great job there. As you see, the calls uh, having some nice fun with the Ancients. So, picking up on the, on the Slack, he will, be, he will be the same level as the Morphin quite soon, I guess. It's gonna actually be misery to help him take care of some of the uh, creeps here. Oh well. Check out the goal for a minute. Yeah, wow, that morphling. He is having such a great time. He has not died yet once. He has joined some fights. I mean, the fight just now he joined, uh, managed to pick up one kill, and he's got five assists. He is a happy morphling. Ethereal blade complete. So definitely uh, having a great time. Smoke up for orange. They know that something has to be done. To turn this ra r game around, because it fa in favor of uh, of CLG right now, no surprise there. Oh, well, they will find the Morphin. There's a the Burrow Strike. They oh, Shackle doesn't let Sonic Wave, and it's gonna be the Power Shot that gets it. Epicent, everything being used for them. That's a kill worth taking with all those uh, all those ultimate juice, with just everything used that they had right now. 50 second cooldown, and Morphling didn't know what hit him. He di wasn't even able to use his regen rune that he had in his uh, in his inventory, or just even maybe he just didn't want to. But uh, yeah, he wasn't able to do a single thing, getting stunned the whole time, and yeah, that's just a fast kill, worth it, for sure. And Orange is going to continue the pressure. Four heroes in this middle lane, Karsh is going through. They don't have the team fight anymore, they don't have the epicenter or the sonic wave, but they're just going to continue putting on some pressure. Sticking in this middle lane, the only one who's not here is KYXY, he's far away on the top lane. Maybe trying to get a kill up on the cost. No, that's not the easiest hero to get a kill up on. There will be a roar. There's the roar. Here comes the TP and KOA X5. Is he going to regret going in there? There's the kill as well. And he's going to drop. Beastmaster taking the kill. And that is the danger of fighting near towers. Nice check with shots here again. Burst strike up on creeps. And then uh, go oh, ice. Oh, ice. Is he going to drop or is he not? Yes, he is. Morphling weave forming through. Taking that one. The tower still went down. But two heroes of orange going down with that. And, uh, well, one on this lane and one on the bottom lane. Uh, top lane, I should say. And that is just, yeah. 
For KYX, so that's the danger of fighting near tower, that the op opponents can be there so fast with just a TP away. And the roar was off cooldown, so given the time for that person to TP in, and that person being the Venomance, of course, as well, I mean, that's the counter for the Templar Assassin. That is just, is just so deadly. And there we go, Roshan being attempted by Steel G, they can't do that, they have the levels, they have the creeps to tank it up, they have got the Chen to help out, they have got the Venomance, of course, they've got everything. And they have the Morphling to pick up the Aegis, who's got 2k gold already. Would it be... Uh, he said something. Wow, sorry, I, I listened to the voice, uh, voice actors for a second. Uh, anyway... Uh, we have got Templar Assassin picking up a Vanguard, so having that survivability up on her. Rather than going for a Blink Dagger, which uh, she did pick up, I believe, in the game, uh, or he did pick up in the game uh, that I mentioned earlier. But he doesn't really have the farm, he doesn't really have the opportunity, he needs to stay alive. So a Vanguard is a very solid item for him to have right now. Queen of Pain, Link to Sphere completed. We've got Sand King building towards some uh, some bracers just to be able to get that survivability up. Invoker denying the tier one ta tier 2 tower on the bottom lane, the top lane. That is something that, that uh, Orange is doing good though. They, I mean, they're still pushing, they're still getting towers regardless if they're losing kills. And to be fair, they have a lot of semi-carries on their team, more more than CLG has. I mean, CLG has the Morphling, yeah, and that's probably the best carry right now in this entire game, but they have to cut the Morphling and other semi-carries. Well, maybe the Invoker can be considered a semi-carry if you get enough farm. Same thing goes for Beastmaster if he gets enough farm. He's building to work as a Necronomicon. But, um... It's, I mean, Queen of Pain, Templar Sessa, and Windrunner. All semi carries. Windrunner, I mean, she picked up a mech. She, she is that hero that would go for a mech. But later on, she her right click damage is definitely not to be messed with. So, in that sense, they are still looking strong. But they have to be able to, to hold their momentum. They have to be able to, to keep the pressure on. Without dying too much, of course, and trying to get pick up some kills like this one on Pycat. If they can do that, it's only a KYX right here, though. And we forming through from Pycat. We'll make sure that nobody goes down. Tier 1 tower on the top lane getting pressure because this tier 1 tower was still so standing, just like the tier 1 tower on the bottom lane for CLG. And oh, Roar going off. KYX with Sonic Web going through. Hits on four heroes, actually. But there's the mechanism charge. Burst Strike hits. Epicenter being channeled. There's the hand of God. Power shot going through. Ice already going down, but so does Miracle. There goes Ice, actually, with the lane. Morphling picking off the sand game with that. KYX ray on the run. Will be invisible. Should be staying alive right now. Or will he not? No, he won't be. And there goes the Queen of Pain as well. And that's three heroes down on the side of Orange. And only the Venomancer picked off by that Epicenter from CLG. And that is CLG taking a team fight and taking a reward in the form of a tier 1 tower on the top lane. And even though that was a perfect setup, that was a burst strike, that was the epicenter hitting, burst strike hitting on 3, sonic wave hitting on a lot, but that, this guy, there was a mechanism, there was a hand of God, and a lot of the damage that was done initially was already wiped out. Uh, still, the epicenter hit, but with that extra armor upon those heroes, I mean, it didn't do as much as it could have, and of course the support would have dropped, yeah, he is kind of squishy, so, uh, yeah, that was uh, not a very great fight for Orange, as they're going to maybe lose a tier 2 tower for that as well. Even though they're fairly close, maybe wanting to defend it. But they don't have a Burrow Strike, don't have a Sonic Wave. And there goes the tower, Invoker picking up the last hit. 2900 gold up on him. As I'm still curious to see what he's going to go for. Picked up an Overclub, maybe he's just going to go for his, uh, for his Aghanim straight off the bat, which he's almost has. Oh, he bought something. Oh, PKB. Wow. BKB picked up by the Invoker. I mean, if we look at the lineup, that is a that is a reasonable item to go for. There's a lot of magic damage coming off from Orange, and uh, you just want to be able to uh, to stay alive, like the Epicenter Sonic Wave. You just want to be able to just continue standing there and hit stuff rather than you know having to dodge those things. Necronomicon level two up on the Beastmaster. Well, level two if he puts up that recipe. Sand King not getting that much farm. I mean, we look at the gold per minute, and it's it's still it's not bad for Orange. I mean, we still have the Queen of Pain and the Templar Assassin being higher than three heroes of the Dire side, uh, sorry, of the Radiant side. But the difference is is just there. We saw the team fight just now. It's gonna be an experience difference that counts as well. With those levels, it is it is just uh, very dangerous uh, for them to to try to take a team fight like head on like they did just now.
if they know that there's five heroes of them there. Uh, what they could do though, I mean the kills that they get now give more experience than the kills and that CLG is getting purely because CLG is higher level. As we see them ha being higher level, apart from the Venerants, of course, so Venerants pick up just now didn't do that much. But for example, if they would pick up the Morphling now again, that would give them so much golden experience. That is, that it, it just one or two team fights could turn this around for Orange. But they have to continue to do that. Queen of Pay pick up the tier 1 tower, so no more tier 1 towers left up in this game. And there's only one tier 2 left on the side of Orange and two tier 2s left on the side of CLG. And there's the level 2 Necronomicon. Venom is picking up a Ghost Scepter. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, well, I was gonna say it's a good item for the Templar Assassin, and it is. But like I said also, there's a lot of magical damage on the Dire Team, so uh, he has to be really careful to use it at the right times. Like if he would have used it just now and at the place where he died, it wouldn't stop him from dying, it would only make him die faster. So, uh, yeah. We're gonna see uh, how he uses Radiant that one. Uh, BKB completed up on the evoke. He also has a four staff though. He meets out. Okay, we XY on the bottom lane, top lane. Gonna force out TPs, force out some defense there. In the meantime, CLG will take a tier 2 tower in, re in that return of that. When uh, Morphling is just. Uh, oh, th he wants the ethereal blade, huh? Oh, Scotty ready up on him! Oh, bam, dead! Yeah. That is just. That is such a far Morphling right now. The Queen of Pain, yeah, okay, she has to back off. She's going for Aghanims just to be able to throw out her Sonic Wave every uh, 40 seconds. Well, if she gets level 3 of that at least. Which she doesn't have just yet, but soon. We have Windrunner picking up a pipe, or at least going for a hood and uh, following up with a pipe soon. Probably a roar up again on the Beastmaster, so they probably want to go for this. Here they go. We farm through. Ice. Whoa. Put in the sandstorm. Straight away. Mechanism goes off. And there goes Ice. Gotta be able to get away. Still has an earn charge up on it. So my drop still. Sonic Web going off. Roar up on the Queen of Pain. There he goes. Invoker picking up the Sand King. Picking up the Queen of Pain. So the Sand King did get ticked over. Hand of God going through. So the Beastmaster is still alive for now. Unless KYXR can get in another hit. And he will be able to do so. There he goes. Deafening Blast will not hit him and he'll be able to get out of that one. So three for one. They picked up the Sand King, picked up the Windrunner. Oh, might pick up the v Templar Assassin just uh, again. And that will be disastrous. He goes invisible. There's a Sentry Ward. And that's a kill. Mega kill for the Morphling. And right now, that was a four for one trade. And that was just... It was, yeah. It was a four for one trade. What else can we say? Heavily dominated by CLG. Keeping on the pressure, even though I would, ex I was expecting them to not being able to do that for for a while. But Morphling, getting so much farm in such a short time, he was just able to do that. I mean, like look at that experience graph as well. The gold graph burst strike, Sand King putting himself in a sandstorm. We'll try to get away from that one. Gill hits and KY XY deafening blast as well. There goes Ice being picked up. Morphling taking out the kill. Shackle doesn't latch. KY XY in a lot of trouble. There he goes. Bycat though get goes down, but he has an agent, so he will be up again. Queen of Pain having to back out there, just like the Windrunner that has a Venomancer ultimate taking on every th all three heroes that are left alive for Orange. And the barracks will be taken down here, there's not that much that they can do against it. Power Shot will go through, but there goes the Windrunner being picked off. Shotgun Morphling doing his name justice. It's gonna be Queen of Pain that will have to blink away in order to not get killed off. Just like the Enchantress, but she can't blink, so she can't do that. And it's gonna be Pika that will take the kill up on her, unless M Miracle can steal the kill, but no. Double kill for the Morphling, as I would not be surprised to see a GG called from Orange right here, because right now, yeah, there we go. Right now, it it looks it looks just not not worth uh, fighting for anymore. Cold snap, Queen of Pain. There we go. Uh, and I just uh, it is best out of three, so we'll see a game number two between these two teams to see if uh, CLG can take one of these games again, or if Orange can force out a game number three. And Venom is picking up a Blink Dagger. Well, that's a new one. Nice. But uh, yeah, so this is a Pro Dota 2 match. Um, a Pro Dota 2 match that will determine which one of these two teams is going to be uh, in the lowers bracket and which one is going to be in the higher in the winners bracket for uh, for the, the 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 grand finals in total. So uh, we will see. All winners bracket games are best out of three. All losers bracket games are best out of one. So you want to be in that winners bracket. And of course, winners bracket has a bit less games as well. And that was just, uh, it would just be ideal for any team that gets into the winner's bracket. Um, my name is Shiver. You can follow my YouTube on Shiver Gaming. So, youtube.com slash Shiver Gaming. 
and uh, yeah, we're gonna wait until the throne explodes to see uh, game number two between these two teams. As uh, we just see the teams having some fun with the kills. Um, holy shit! More fling. Oh, we get some resin back. War. Look at that pike though. He wants to mount cell as well. And there goes the throne. Okay. So, I will show you this end screen, end screen for a short time, and then we will jump with ourselves into the next game. And, um, we will see if Orange uh, will switch, out the, switch around their tactic, which probably will be the case. And, uh, there we go. So, see you in a moment.